she called and went back to work because she was a dedicated physician, just like so many healthcare workers. And what she saw on April 1st, she reported back to us as, as Armageddon. A patient's dying in the waiting room where their portable oxygen would just expire and not enough beds, not enough help. She's working 15 hours and 18 hours. Only a handful of days later, she was basically in a catatonic state. She couldn't get out of her chair. My name is Corey Feist. I spent over 20 years as a healthcare leader and executive. And during that time, came firsthand with speaking with physicians about their burnout and their challenges, as well as nurses, and really started a significant amount of work on it. Lorna was a very driven physician, always looking out for others, always taking care of patients. At that time, there were so many of her colleagues who were calling out sick and contracting the virus because no one knew what kind of PPE to use. She called us and said, my colleagues are gonna be able to recognize that I can't keep up. Unfortunately, that fear of basically her career being over was one of the things that we believe contributed to her decision to take her own life. I cannot change the culture in medicine. I can point it out, but I can't change it myself. And that's when Jennifer and I decided, in a moment of calm, that we needed to tell her story. What COVID has now done is it has amplified beyond just burnout. It goes to things like PTSD and depression. This country now needs to lean into the conversation around removing barriers and improving their culture so that they have the ability to get the care without fear of repercussions. Is the conversation changing or do we still? Stopping the stigma is the first step of reaching out for even just saying, I'm not doing well, I'm not okay. We have to give our people the ability to report that problem, to be honest. So why aren't you getting help? The number one thing is I'm worried about reporting to some licensing board. I'm worried it's going to go on my insurance, which is also code for I'm going to lose my job. There are so many areas where, because of their profession, right. people are afraid to get the right. very help that they need. The fact that Dr. Breen was practicing in an emergency room in New York City, which was literally ground zero. People almost never think about how stressful it can be. But it has become more and more and more part of their lives. You know, this is the first ever piece of federal legislation that looks out for the healthcare workforce. So we're doing a very grassroots approach. We're encouraging all the hospitals in this country to just publish what the facts are currently. You have an expertise. I mean, you've been talking about the culture, but yeah. in terms of what your own profession is, exactly. you see this administrative exactly. burden thing and how it affects physicians. So you exactly. have some unique insights. We've talked a lot about how the culture in medicine was one of the contributors to Lorna's death. I've heard from many doctors, medical students, residents, nurses in training their expectations about how they're going to be taken care of in the future are very different. We've really gone a long way towards not eliminating stigma about mental health coverage, but at least expanding the conversation. So the, the, the lessons from the Breen Bill are starting to kind of populate out into other professions where, you know, hey, folks have seen a lot and they've gone through a lot and we need to be there for them. Absolutely. What are the big things that can be done? Yeah. Well, some of them are really small and cost no money, which is just having the conversation and checking in, right? Exactly. And saying like, right. Every single person in the healthcare workforce right now is sort of lean into the culture piece, take ownership of that, take responsibility. We all have a bigger voice than maybe we think we do and a bigger impact than we think we do. Years ago, you know, we'd have a huddle and it would never end with, hey, how are you doing? Now yeah. it's people are like, how are you doing? And they really, really developed that culture. 
We know that Lorna cared as deeply about her colleagues as she did her patients. And so for me to be able to bring my professional background together with this very personal tragedy and to continue to shine her light of caring for others, it's the most rewarding work I've ever done.